donde se respeten a la persona en esa ciudad y se apoya a la policía y se acabe a la delincuencia, ellos van a decir, una persona lo hizo y su nombre es Eric Aro. But guys, today is the day of the new mayor. And in order to hear not only from myself, but from top leaders, I want to give you first, with the respect that she deserves, the president of the Great War of Manhattan, Gil Brewer. Thank you very much. I'm the borough president. I want to thank you, Dallas Rodriguez. And I want to say something very special about Eric Adams. You know, we came in as borough president. There are three of us today, Ruben, me, and the great Eric Adams. We had lunch all the time. We talked about issues. This is a guy, not only does he care about union workers and good jobs, he cares about families and individuals, and he understands the substance to make these ideas implemented. He wants to make things happen. He wants things to be implemented. Housing, good jobs, health care, climate change. That's what we're really all about. And I'm here to say he's also fun. It's good to have a mayor who understands what it's like to be able to have fun and engage people. Charisma matters. Charisma matters. So thank you very much for being here today. He's also healthy. He eats all those green things that I don't like. But it's very good. Thank you very much, Eric Adams, for running and for being our mayor. And thank you, my friend, Udonis Rodriguez. Yay, Eric Adams! diversity across the five borough, but I need to be calling my other two leaders here from Manhattan. The person who is at the national level, he will be a great partner to the new mayor because he's a leader not only in the city but in the whole nation, especially in the Judiciary Committee. Let me give you Congressman Nana. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to see everybody here. Election day is a very important day. Now, I know, I don't have to tell you about why it's important to elect Eric Adams. I don't have to tell you about the work he's done as borough president. I don't have to tell you about how he supports union workers. But I do have to tell you that we can be complacent. I know people say, well, the election's obvious. It's a democratic town. Don't forget, we have had Republican mayors for 20 of the last 28 years. And what mayors? Rudy Giuliani, who you can see with Trump all the time, planning insurrection. And Mike Bloomberg, who was a decent guy but didn't understand working people. So don't take anything for granted. You've got to get out there. We have early voting, and a lot of people have already voted, but you've got to tell anybody who hasn't. You've got to vote. You've got to vote. Because we need Eric Adams. And we need... And we need to show the country that we are democratic. And we've got an election on Tuesday in Virginia, which may or may not go okay. And we have to counter that up here by having a huge, tremendous victory. Because democracy is at stake. If we, God forbid, don't do well here and lose in Virginia and lose momentum for the Congress and lose the House next year, they will do, the Republicans will do what they're doing in every state they control. And, and there'll be no one to stop them. And that is destroying democratic government. Restricting who can vote, restricting people of color from voting restricting working people from voting, and then rigging who counts the votes. We may not have free elections anymore. That's what's at stake. We have an election coming up next year, which we have to give a momentum to now. Next year, our great governor, Kathy Hochul, will stand for re-election, and we have to re-elect her. So even though even though this is a so-called off-year election. It is very important, and very important to get out and vote for Eric Adams and for the entire Democratic ticket. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Congressman Andres. I would like to acknowledge uh, those oh, brothers and sisters elected who are here. You were here from Sunday. Let's give a round of applause to them. The great governor who is here, Kathy Hoko. Controller Tom Dinapoli, Board President Ruben Diaz. You are from Gale, from Nadler. We also have here Joe from the Union, Richard Morocco, ACC, George, George Degre, Joe Breger from the Conferences. We also have Joseph, George here, George Farnassi from the Fire Officers. And elected, we also have Brad Holman, Senator uh, Assembly Member Bobby Carroll, Natalia Fernandez. Then we have Council Member Dino and Francisco Moya. Ben yeah. Kelo, Peter Cole, Helen Rosenthal, Julie Manning, future Council Member, and also Council Member very soon, Ma uh, uh, Marjorie Velasquez. Let me also give you the next person, the Speaker of the Council, Corey Johnson. Is the union in the house? Is the union in the house? I'm not going to speak long. I just want to say this moment that we are in, four days from a transformative election for the city that we love, Eric Adams has prepared his entire life for this moment. And the issues that are on the table, the issues of public safety, the issues of housing, the issues of homelessness, the issues of education, these are not just passing throwaway lines for Borough President Eric Adams. On homelessness, Eric Adams has a plan for that. On education, especially for children with disabilities, Eric and I are both dyslexic, Eric Adams has a plan for that on how to bring communities together in the name of public safety and get illegal guns off of our streets, Eric Adams has a plan for that. And Eric Adams, as you have seen over the course of this campaign, both in the primary and now during the general election, is someone that will go to any neighborhood in New York City, no matter if that neighborhood voted for him or didn't vote for him. That is the type of man and mayor that Eric Adams will be. Let's elect Eric Adams on Tuesday. Thank you, Speaker. I also want to acknowledge we're here in the great control of Tandinapoli. <laughs> Senator John Lu, Congressman Adriano Espaillat. <laughs> the great Brooklyn Democratic County Chairman, Ronise Bishop, I give a bit of applause. Now let me give you two individuals that I have the honor to be working together because this is about diversity, right? Yes. We cannot talk about diversity and not do diversity by action. And that's the difference that you may make. But to hear from two other great colleagues here, let me give you the bronze board president, Ruben Diaz, followed by the queen board president, Donna Berichi. Yeah. Our Democrats in the house. Are there Democrats in the house? Yeah. Is union in the house? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, when you vote for somebody, you're speaking about who you are and what you believe in. I'm with Eric Adams because I'm a Democrat. As Democrats, we believe that government has a responsibility to support, to help, those that are voiceless, those that are the most marginalized. I'm with Eric Adams because as a brother of someone who was violently stabbed last year, I want my family, like all New Yorkers, to be safe. I'm with Eric Adams because I'm also a brother of a retired police sergeant. And so I know that Eric has the right equilibrium and understands that we want safety in our communities, and that could happen without sacrificing the dignity of the residents of New York City. I'm with Eric Adams because I'm a Bronx boy from the Boogie Down Bronx. A 
Bronx boy who got a great public education. I'm gifted and talented. But we know that still there are too many black and brown children in the city of New York that are being, that if somebody's gonna work, they better be treated accordingly, and that's why we need organized labor. Estamos con Eric Adams, porque Eric Adams ha defendido a los pobres. Eric Adams ha estado ahí para los inmigrantes. Eric Adams apoya vivienda asequible. So today, tomorrow, and Sunday, and definitely on Tuesday, join us, whether you're Democrat, Independent, Republican, and let's make Eric Adams the next mayor of the city of New York. Also, I also want to acknowledge, of course, she will speak because the Staten Island will not be anymore the forgotten borough. And in the past primary, there was a winning there, and his name was Eric Adam. Yeah. And in this election, in the general election, he also will win in Staten Island. And this person is doing a great job working on his behalf. Let me give you Senator Sabino. without the working men and women and the labor movement in New York City. I, and, and I know that when Eric Adams is the mayor, we are going to have a mayor who respects the rights of working men and women, women, respects the collective bargaining rights of working men and women because that is what he has done his whole career. That is who he is. I know Eric Adams. I have known him for more than 20 years. I sat next to him in the Senate chamber. I know what he's capable of. I know what's in his heart. I know the things that he thinks are important. I know what he is going to focus on as the mayor. You've heard him talk over and over about reducing crime and improving criminal justice. You've heard him talk about improving outcomes for all of our children, not just some of our children, all of our neighborhoods, not just some of our neighborhoods. We know what he's gonna do because we've seen what he's done. Now. I think Congressman Nadler talked about how important it is that people don't stay home next week. People think he's got this in the bag. How easy things could go awry if people don't turn out. Now is not the time for people to think this election is over. It is critically important that people come out. He is running against a buffoon. <laughs> cannot afford. The seriousness of this moment in time requires a serious man. I heard him call Eric the other night a robot. He's not a robot. He's an incredibly serious, dedicated public servant. We need that now more than ever. Think about this. This morning, this day, is the ninth anniversary of Hurricane Sandy. A storm that devastated the, the shores of our city, devastated my community, devastated Brooklyn and parts of Queens, devastated the entire region. Imagine if another thing like that happened. Imagine if that buffoon were the mayor. That is why we need a serious individual who understands the complexities of the time, who understands that we need... Thank you, Senator. We have two great speaking on the line who are our... And I'm sorry, my colleague here, the Queen's Board President, Donna Marie Chain, of course, our state control at Tandinapoli. But I'm going to ask him to excuse me to call someone that is busy in D.C. He had to go back there. He's fighting. He's going to be a partner of the new mayor to be sure that New York City is a role model to the whole nation. Let me give you Senator Schumer. <laughs> Thank you. 
Are the hotel trades in the house? Yeah. Did we keep your health care? Yeah. Are the carpenters in the house? Yeah. Are we getting you a trillion dollars of construction money? Yeah. Who else we got? Seventy-nine, the hot carriers and the laborers. My cousin was a member. A.B. Weinshaw, a great hot carrier, passed away. All right, now folks, we love you too. So I want to say something very important here. We have a great team running here in New York City. We have somebody who is just going to knock their socks off as mayor. You're going to see how damn good this guy is going to be as mayor, Eric Adams. Is Jumani here? No. But we have a great, does he have any opponent? <laughs> Jumani Williams, don't forget him. Where's our great Brad Lander? He's here too, in spirit. And all our great city council people, raise your hands. And by the way, this new city council, I have met with just about every newly elected member, is gonna be the most progressive, the strongest, the smartest, the most pro-labor city council, a majority women, majority people of color, best city council we've ever had. And I want to tell you one thing that did it was public financing. Because people who were community organizers or legal aid, who never would have had the wherewithal to enter the race and win, got it from that public financing. We want to do that nationally, folks. So. Let me just say something. New York City sets the mold for the country. The greatest crisis we probably had in the last 100 years, this one has been second, but was the Great Depression. And while this country was languishing, and there were evil Republicans down there in Washington, led by someone named Herbert Hoover, this, the federal government tied his hands, and people were hurting and hurting and hurting. But who came to the forefront? New York City and New York State. Passing, passing the most progressive legislation that helped create the middle class, creating the labor movement, the Fab Partly, and doing so much else. They were there. You were doing the same thing now in the city council, and in the state legislature, the state assembly, and the state senate, we are seeing the kind of trailblazing legislation that it'll be my job to convince the national, Nate, the national legislature, the Congress, the House and Senate, and particularly when we get more Democrats, please get me some more Democrats. When we get more Democrats, we're going to follow your lead. So I say to everybody, turn out, elect a great mayor, a, elect a great uh, city council, a, elect a great controller, a great, elect a great public advocate, and New York City will once again lead the way, helping labor, helping progressive people, helping working families. On to victory, everybody. On to victory. Senator Tom Schumer, a big round of applause. Let me give you now the Queen Board President of Richard and then, of course, the great controller of Tom DiNapoli. All right, is Labor in the house? Is Labor in the house? I don't know about y'all, but I love Edonis Rodriguez's accent. Let me just start by saying that it is great to be here as we get ready to take this city back on Tuesday. There may be this guy running on what, that Save the City line? 
but I'm going to tell you it's Eric Adams time. We have been through a lot over the course of the last 19 months. Thousands upon thousands of people died from COVID-19. I want to speak about what leadership looks like at the height of a pandemic. When I was down in the Rockaways, and we didn't have any PPE, and we couldn't find people to come down to help us, guess who showed up? Eric Adams showed up in a minivan with gloves, PPE, our first line workers didn't even have gowns. He brought the gowns down to Far Rockaway. That's what leadership looks like. We are fired up for you, Eric, because it's not just about you. It's about the future of our city as my brother, Bronx Ball President, Ruben Diaz, love you, <laughs> talked about how violence came to his front door. My friend would have been 39 years old on yesterday. He was shot and killed in South Jamaica, Queens. Eric understands the stories of young black men who look like me. Because why? He comes from our neighborhood. He doesn't need a GPS to find any of our neighborhoods across New York City. Eric is up. So it was an easy decision to endorse the best candidate for the mayor of the city of New York, and that was Eric Adams. And we got work to do. Let's not take this for granted. Edonis is about to kick me off the stage. But I just want to end by saying, let's not take this for granted. Let's knock on every single door across this city. Let's give Eric, I mean, he already got a lot of money, but you still need to donate so we can get that message out. We need to call our neighbors. We need to get every single person out to send a very strong message that this city belongs to the working people of New York City. And there's only one candidate in this race who's going to do that, and that is Eric Adams. God bless you all. Let's welcome the great controller that will be helping Eric big time because besides public safety, creating good pay job is going to be a top priority. So sitting in a portfolio to decide how to invest $300 billion at the state level, he will be a partner controlling Tandina. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Donis Rodriguez, a great MC and the number one guy on the Eric Adams team. Give me Donis a round of applause. I am proud to stand with Labor in the House of Labor. Thank you, Hotel Trades, for hosting us. Proud to stand with all these wonderful elected officials and candidates and proud to stand with Eric Adams, the next mayor of the great city of New York. <laughs> to Eric Adams, I want to say thank you. Thank you for stepping forward at this time of, of critical moment in the city's history. You could have taken the easy way out after a great tenure as borough president, great tenure as state senator when you and I got to work together and to know each other, great service with NYPD, a lot of other things you could have been doing. And instead, you step forward on a mission with a message. Not everybody heard that message in the beginning, but you were consistent and you were true to your heart and to your values. And you know what? New York has recognized who the best person was to lead us into the future. And that is Eric Adams. That is Eric Adams, isn't it? And, and as everyone has said, it's not done yet. The power is not in any of our speeches. The power is in what you are going to do between now and Tuesday to get your friends and your family and your colleagues and your neighbors out to vote. Let's remember, until all those votes are cast, it's not over. And we need to be sure that Eric not only wins, as I'm confident he will, but that he wins with a mandate so that, in fact, he can lead and bring us to brighter days here in New York City. Eric, thank you again for stepping forward. We are all there with you. We are on the Eric Adams team. Thank you very much. We're almost there to hear 
from the governor who will introduce the next measure, but before that, let me give you congressman, a congressman that we've been working together for so many decades, representing so many places from the Bronx, Washington Knights, and Harlem El Barrio, Congressman Adriano Espaillat. Good morning. Buenos dias. I bring you greetings from Washington, D.C. We have a fight going on in this country because we've been through the crisis of our lifetime, the COVID-19 pandemic. And we need a veteran, somebody that's going to be able to guide us out of that crisis. And so when we get the billions upon billions of dollars to New York City to build back better, we need Eric Adams as mayor to make sure it comes to our community. When the hotel industry opens up door to door, we need Eric Adams to be the mayor of the city of New York. When we build the second phase of the Second Avenue subway, we need Eric Adams to be the mayor of the city of New York. When immigrants are not left behind because we cannot build better by leaving the immigrants that knocked on our doorstep that left the food in front of the door, that worked the fields of farm workers, that cleaned our grandmothers and went there and put their lives on the line and had to scrub themselves clean when they went back home so they wouldn't get their children sick. We can't leave them behind. We got to build back better. We need everybody. When we get your universal daycare because women got disproportionately hurt by this pandemic because they're the ones that lost most of the jobs because they had to stay home with their kids, we want them back at work full time. We need daycare. We need Eric Addison's mayor. If we are to recover from this pandemic, there's only one mayor that we need. There's only one person that's going to be at the helm making sure this city comes back. There's only one person that's going to ensure that the hotel industry opens up. There's only one person that will give prevailing wage jobs to carpenters and to everybody else. That's the next mayor of the city of New York, Eric Adams. On behalf of the Queen Democratic County, Fran Joseph, we have 30 seconds, few seconds to say to you all because we're almost there to hear from the governor and from the next mayor, Eric Adams. Joseph, Fran Joseph. Good morning. When I say Eric, you say Adams. Eric? Adams. Eric? Adams. My name is Frank Joseph. I'm here on behalf of the Queens County Young Democrats, and I'm here with Debbie from the Brooklyn Young Democrats. And we want to say, as young people, as the emerging generation, they're looking at us, they want strong leadership, and they've seen that strong leadership and guidance from Eric Adams. The good book says, in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. And yes, Eric has a steady hand, but look at his counselors, those around him. So Queens County Young Dems, Brooklyn Young Dems, proudly endorses our next mayor, Eric Adams. Right? We believe in a better New York, in a stronger New York, and we believe that Eric Adams is that for us. Yeah. Eric Adams for mayor! Yeah. Thank you. Let's give a big round of applause for the literacy of the youth. Yeah. And this person and I come from the most beautiful island of the whole world, the island of La Española. The island of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Let me give you the, Bru the Brooklyn Democratic County Chairman, with Denise, uh, Renise Bishop. Yeah. I, I well, we say Eric, you say Eric. 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 Why we 
all voting for Eric. But I'm gonna take this a little bit personal. We are in the halls. Thank you for being here. This is personal for me because I grew up in the senior hall. I was the child of a hotel trade council delegate. And we have heard all the wonderful things of why we're supporting Eric Adams. But let me tell you one of the reasons why I'm supporting him. I am a daughter of a Haitian immigrant. We've been through a lot. My mom came into this country to capture the American dream. As a single mom, she raised us and labor, union, gave my mother that opportunity to put food on our table. brought many other members to HTC and to the union labor world. She believed in opportunity. She believed in wealth building. She believed in workers' rights, which is why she fought for all of us. My mother wasn't feeling well around February. And one thing she told me is, my hotel, her lifeline, which is the HTC, just endorsed Eric Adams. Yeah! And when my mother was in the hospital, holding for her life, she held my hand and she said, here's a mayor candidate that you need to go and endorse now. And I called Eric and I said, Eric, mom is not feeling well. I need to come out and endorse you. She told me to. And when I did, my mother squeezed my hand and told me you did the right thing. Yeah. And so I stood there. I'm supporting Eric Adams. Not for all the other stuff. We know all the things that he did great. Fighting for workers' rights. Fighting for children fighting to make sure that there's not a pipeline to prison, but a pipeline to work, to, to competitive education. Eric Adam believed in the immigrant community. He believed in the working family. He believed in the things that made me who I am today, an opportunity of hope. And that's what Eric Adam's about. So I am here today proud standing in the halls, the union hall that I was raised in. Yes, yes HCC. <laughs> to support and encourage each and every one of us to make sure we turn out the vote this Tuesday and elect Eric Adams for Our assembly women, a big round of applause. Yeah. I think that I heard a lot of people saying that in our society, you need to do walk the walk, talk the talk, and walk the walk, right? You know, even my daughter going to Rezia, they had to deal with my accent. <laughs> but in my family, there are three generations of Americans already. Eric had the support of the Jews who believe that Eric built bridges. Eric had the support of the Italian, the Irish, the NYPD officers, the firefighters. But Eric had the support of people like me, who are 40% of the New York City population. They are the face of a great-grandfather or someone that came here 
150 years ago. Because if you are not a Native American, you are a immigrant. Yeah. So I feel that this moment, this day, everyone should be ready to come out and vote. That's how, we, that's how we fight back. Because never in my life since 1983, I have seen anyone, a mayor to be, given the opportunity of someone like my accent to be the MC in his event, to be the top person, to be the face of people like me who wash dishes, who work in the daily, who work at the hotel, but it's not only Eric who believe in that New York City that will be a role model that is ready to push back against those right wing who want to follow Donald Trump. But beside Eric, there's someone at the state level who is also fighting, working 24-7, a panel of the new mayor. Let me give you Governor Kathy Hochul. <laughs> matters so much to them. If you allow me one second, I'll tell you, I'm the granddaughter of Irish immigrants who left extreme poverty. Grandma worked as a domestic worker for people that were cruel to her. Grandpa was a migrant farm worker until he found a job making steel in Lackawanna where my dad worked and all his uncles worked. My grandfather's brothers were carpenters and longshoremen and plumbers. Labor made me who I am, and I have steel running through my veins because of labor. And that's why I know leaders when I see them. And I know what unity looks like. And we've not seen a lot of unity between the state and the city in a long time. I see unity on this stage, right? These are my allies because you wanted them to be your leaders, and therefore I will work yeah. with them. It's that simple to me. Yeah. And I grew up in a rough and tumble house with a lot of brothers, sports and all. I am so sick and tired of watching rock'em sock'em robots play out between Albany and New York City. I'm ready to say, let peace break out. Yeah. And I am so looking forward to have a partner whose values I believe in, fighting for working men and women, keeping our city straight, safe, well not straight, stay safe. <laughs> Anybody can do what they want to be in our city. <laughs> we are diverse. But we are going to build back in a way that you've never seen before and we're gonna harness the energy in this room and rooms like this all over the city and the state and bring back New York City in a way that no one could imagine. And I can't do it alone as your governor. I need a willing partner. Someone who you will see headlines that get ready for this. New York governor works with New York City mayor. Can you handle that, everybody? Can you handle that? That's what's going to happen when you make sure that this man becomes the governor, the man, friend, the, man, the, man, the governor's friend, the governor's ally. Now, don't be the everybody else's one. The governor, not you too. Not you too. Say 
it isn't true. That's all. Y'all say the governor's best friend. The governor's best friend will be the mayor of New York City. Because you, going out now and on Tuesday, are going to run up the score. I love my sports. We're going to run up the score on Tuesday and make sure that Eric Adams is the leader of the greatest city on earth, New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you Eric Adams, our colleagues and oftentimes in this business uh, we have a tendency to really minim minimize what they do every day but I'm with them I see the hours the commitments the dedication uh, these are some of the finest men and women I know in this city uh, there is no real uh, financial benefit of running for office being away from your family, spending countless number of hours being critiqued and criticized, always scrutinized. And I have been on the field of battles with so many of them throughout my time in government, and I just see how much they just care. They just care. And to have them here today on this stage with us as we pull up the curtain on a new city and start a real life drama and love affair with the city that we are committed to and dedicated to. All I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And to, my, to my union family that's here today. Many of the leaders are not on the stage with us, but they have been on the stage of this campaign. Uh, but to HTC and Rich, so much support for. And I am not sure what the carpenters drink every day, but you guys are fired up all the time. You know, local, local 79 and the neighborhoods, DC 37, uh, TWU, uh, just so many other unions, we receive support as the blue collar candidate. And I just want to tell you this. You don't win a baseball game in the eighth inning. The ninth inning is November 2nd. And on November 2nd, we take off the intramural jerseys and we put on one jersey called Team New York. Yeah. Team New York. And I said this on the campaign trail, and many of my colleagues here, particularly the governor, pointed out. Look into the lineage of all of our lives. What you're going to find, you're going to find a blue-collar worker. You're going to find someone that was part of some sort of union that laid the pl platform that allowed us to do what we're doing today. If you take away the union experience, the union card, you're going to take away the health care that stabilized us during those moments when we were sick. You're going to take away the pensions that allowed us to stabilize our homes and our families. You're going to take away the ability to buy a home so we can build institutional wealth for our generations to come. You're going to take away the environments where you're safe enough to be in a workplace without being treated unfairly. We are who we are because of the union experience. That's why we're here. And there is, there is, there is a subtext to this race that if you don't look closely, you'll miss it. This race is not about me. This not, race is not about the name Eric Adams. This race is about people in this city that believes they are left behind and can never catch up. Every day someone is in a kitchen in a restaurant as a dishwasher, and they feel as though that is the end of their journey. And then they hear my story of being a dishwasher as a child and realize that the possibilities are endless. Yes. Yes. 
Every day they are in some hotel making up a bedroom or cleaning a sink or bathroom. And they believe that there's no real prosperous future for them. Then they hear of the stories of my mother cleaning the houses of other people, hoping that one day her son could be part of the decision makers of those who are hotel workers throughout the city. They may hear, they may be sitting on Rikers Island right now or in a holding cell in one of the precincts in our city and think that where they are is who they are. And then they will hear about an Eric Adams who was arrested as a child and now is on the precipice of becoming the mayor in charge of that same police department. They may hear, they may hear that they are not capable to go to an Ivy League school somewhere. And then they will hear about Eric Adams that went to college at night and paid his way course after course to obtain his degree. They may believe that because they're in the classroom with a learning disability, that they will always be treated unfairly. And then they will learn that there's a person that's running for the mayor of the city of New York that will be in charge of the educational system that allow all children to receive the education they deserve. They may be living in a homeless shelter and feel as though that their lives would never be renewed. And then they learn about a man that had to carry a garbage bag full of clothing to school every day because they were afraid they was going to be thrown out and at least had a change of clothing. And now he would be in charge of the homeless system and the housing system to build affordable housing. What happened on this campaign? Other candidates wanted to be heard. I wanted to be felt. I wanted New Yorkers to feel that I was you. I'm one of you. I'm not special. This is not my moment. This is the moment of people who have hit a bend in the road. I'm saying to them, that's the not the end of the road. You can make a turn and you can move forward. So yes. Yes, people are going to critique me. People are going to say that he lacks the perfection. People are going to say, well, he doesn't have the appearance of who we believe should be the mayor. People are going to say he didn't go to the schools we feel the mayor should go to. Let me tell you, I'm perfectly imperfect in a city made up of perfectly imperfect people that are needed to have a perfect city. That's where we're going. This is our moment. This is our moment. This city will never be the same. We accomplished this task. You will never have a city again where inequality is the normality of a city. You'll never have a city again with 65% of black and brown children never reach proficiency. You'll never have a city again with 55% of the inmates at Rikers Island have learning disabilities. You'll never have a city again where black and brown women are dying 12 times the rates of white women for maternal morbidity and no one cares. You'll never have a city again when you see bullets carved highways of death killing young and black and brown children and no one seems to care. You'll never have a city again when you have inadequate health care and we demonize people based on their zip codes. You'll never have a city again when you won't have gifted and talented programs in every part of the city and we won't allow people to have what they need. You will never have that city again. Once we move forward, we will never go back. We will never go back. And let's go backwards. So, I'm in a job. I'm in a job. So determined. So determined. And so, we have an obligation. We have an obligation to see this through. Because there are so many forces will attempt to stop and derail what we've done. Yeah, yes. This entire journey of the last four years 
have been remarkable as I move through the communities. And if you just look at every group, Early Chinese building our railroad system and could not ride on the trains that they were built on. Early African Americans picking cotton and couldn't wear the clothing that the cotton was made out of. Early Irish having signs, no dogs, no Irish allowed. Early Italians being demonized just because of a numerical minority who were participating in illegal behavior, you demonize the entire community. Early Spanish speakers who came here because of their dialect was not allowed to move up in government and participate in what we have to offer. Early groups, Muslims, attacked and treated unfairly when their women wore hijabs. Early Caribbeans and Haitians, early groups who wanted to participate in this thing called the American dream. You look under the fingernail of every group in this country, you'll see the dirt and grind of climbing up the mountain one hand at a time to participate in the American dream. January 1st, that dream awakens, and all of us have an opportunity to participate in that dream. That's what this moment is about. This is the only country on the globe where dream is attached to our name. There's no German dream. There's no Polish dream. There's no French dream. Or damn it, there's an American dream. And you all have a right to that dream. You have a right to participate in that dream. And at the foundation of that dream, the bed we lay in, to allow us to have the sleep to dream of the men and women of our unions. We will never allow anyone to take away our ability to pursue that dream. I'm on the precipice of accomplishing my dream. And when I get there, we will accomplish New York City residents' dreams together. One Direction, let's win this race. Let's change our city. Love you.